Hey y'all, once again this is Porty1119 with Headframe Hunters. We're uh, here for episode 3 of our mining series. Today we're going to be doing some uh, additional sampling and uh, looking more in depth at, uh, at our resource. So we're up top side. See, uh, that's our, our decline box cut. There's the, the shaft. So we got a new toy. Got, uh, this guy. It's a Dewalt cordless electric hammer drill. We're going to be taking a multitude of chip samples down this vein. Uh, I'll try to flash our earlier samples here. I didn't get good video of those. We're going to be sampling this valve first, which is uh, vein material. And what uh, Pecos is doing here, he's setting down a uh, drop box. Set it's even. Yeah, so he's using the fin hoe, giving one pop even, and setting a drop cloth down. That lets us uh, catch our sample with the drop cloth, which makes it uh, a lot easier uh, as opposed to trying to catch it with a tiny little bucket. Okay, we may, you want to come a little bit further down the drift? I'm thinking go after the nodule for because we're going to be making a lot of dust. Okay. That's going to, I'm definitely hearing protection in uh, respirators. Versus... Yeah, this ain't, uh... yep, I agree with that. And then we can just, you know, we can finish that chip some other time, make sure we have some more bits, but. Yeah, I actually like uh, this up here a bit more than that. I mean, it is starting to get mixed in with the, the wall line. Yeah. That right there looks That's really better. That actually, looks nice. You know what? Yeah, you want to get that nodule? Yeah, I'm going to make the something I want the nodule. Let's do it. Well, that first sample was, uh, we were kicking up a lot more dust than we were comfortable with for, uh, you know, the probability of it actually running. Um, so we'll come back with the uh, respirators for that. So we're here at the end of uh, 110 degree drift. You can see uh, Alan Pecos back there flashing their cap lamps. Uh, so we believe this runs directly into that N1 resource area. And what we found in here this is sort of a nodular material, and this this black sulfide is a, a really good sign. It's been associated historically with uh, very good ore grades in this district. So I'm gonna yeah you know, take our hammer drill. We're not sponsored by Dewalt. Take our hammer drill and uh, try and get a whole bunch of that knocked down. We've got the two and a half gallon bucket set right there. 
with the, the cut-up sample bag as a drop cloth to catch cuttings that land outside of it so we don't lose as much of the sample. We'll see if I can get a, a decent camera mount this way. Alright, got our steel mounted up. We're going to use this masonry bit first because it seemed to work with this material better. We actually drilled a 5 inch hole. I've still got quite a bit to go. All right. You can see uh, some pretty nice looking material there. Hey, did you get a chunk out of it? Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, I got a chunk. down pretty nicely. Uh, try the chisel. Should have it in my bag. Well, we want the mason and dead cool and uh, keep from losing anything. In case this gets pumped over. And, uh, Put our accumulated cuttings in the bucket and reseat the, uh, the drop cloth. What we need is uh, a decent way to keep this all wetted down. There's no water needle in these like you have on a, on a jack leg. I love a water needle though, that would help a lot. or chip mode. seeing is that if there is a, a crack or joint that the chisel works very well to exploit it but if there isn't got to use uh, the drill the masonry bit and the hammer drill mode to uh, sort of develop some fractures to work on
Oh yeah, it's a nice chunk. Okay, so this is uh, a couple other, there's number three, one of our first samples. What happened is we salted it. See that blue gray off to the left is a uh, wall, anesthetic wall rock. And the, the rusty material on the right is ore. That's also ore. That sample ran okay. And uh, there's some floor spar right about where my cap lamp is. So the real exciting part is that this drift right here that we were sampling, that's where I was taking that nodule sample. It goes about 50 feet, 40, 50 feet back. And it runs at an azimuth of 110 degrees. Well, when we get topside, uh, we'll show you what that means more in context, but it runs directly into what's called the N1 resource area of uh, an adjacent mine which has been confirmed with multiple diamond drill holes. It's, there's material there, and we can come into it from the other side of their, uh, their patent's end line, which is really exciting. And here's where our decline continues. It goes probably another 50, 60 feet. Uh, however, over that clay seam, it's flooded, uh, so we don't have access. And then this is uh, the back azimuth of the, the 110 degree drift. Let's see, they had all those holes. That's a, that's a, a round that they had laid out. Uh, and particularly, I can see it better now, what they were going after. So this left side, this is waste. And then as we come into the right side, uh, we're starting to see another vein that's about five to six feet wide. So we took a, a sample right there. We'll see how it runs. And then it looks uh, looks decent up in the back. But you know, this is promising. It's not very wide, but that's the, the real advantage of having a, a one-yard machine is that we can come in and mine uh, very narrow veins efficiently. And we can just park uh, a young buggy right here, load over the tailgate, and uh, send it to the surface and be mining very efficiently with minimal dilution compared to what we'd get trying to run a, a three-yard or to a lesser extent a two-yard down here. So, I was mentioning about 110 degree heading on that drift down there. Well, would you believe it? This vein is about 110 degrees. It's the same vein. And that's their, their N1 resource. So we can mine all the way to our end line, in theory, if it runs. And we've got, you know, depending on uh, specifics, because we still need to properly survey it. I'm just working off of, uh, off of maps. We've got probably 600 feet of, uh, of potential vein material. And uh, I estimate the bottom of the decline is about the 5500 level. And they've got drifts at the 5450, 5550, I think 5600 elevation. Which uh, is basically gonna be, somewhere we're gonna be almost level with the road. So we'll be able to run right up to the end line. We're hoping that there's thousands of tons in there. It just it all depends on uh, whether or not it wants to run. We've actually got two veins here. So this this outcrop up on the hill crosses the road, and you see that kind of stack of boulders. That's a continuation of the same vein, and it runs pretty much directly to the shaft. That's what was mined via the old open stope there. They probably pulled several thousand tons out. And the, the new workings are going after this, this vein here, which is one of the main veins in the district, and it can be up to 30 feet wide in places. It doesn't run across that width, but it's there. Uh, also on our 
agenda, but not for today, is uh, that little prospect shaft up on the hillside, because that is on the on the same claim. And we'd like to see if that's anything, or if it's just you know 15 foot down, and they found uh, either barren quartz or andesite or just nothing interesting. But we do want to take a look at it. And uh, yeah, we have our beautiful steel pipe head frame, masterfully engineered. A work part. Yeah, those are a thing. <laughs>